So you know that I originally reviewed this game back in 2020, like a whole two years ago, and the game was my sleeper hit of the year back then, and now it's on the Nintendo Switch, and it's still that sleeper hit. It's just now you can take this with you wherever you want to go, dock it on any TV you got your Nintendo Switch dock connected to, and you can experience one of the greatest games I've played in quite some time. And the other thing, too, that's uh, very, very interesting about this is not shit has really changed. This is still the same game from then. It's just on the Switch. And um, that's not a bad thing. So let's go ahead and talk about it. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim for Nintendo Switch. Story to be told here. I'm going to tell it. Let's get into it. This wasn't written with your comfort in mind. Nah. Made my decision, wasn't tough to decide. Nah. Me and my boys, we get it done every time. <laughs> Gotta earn it, you can't just jump in the line. You'll get rushed to the side. I, I, I top my division, I've been building since I started. In the parking lot, I parked it. I came in while picking targets. My career cannot be tarnished. I'm a champion regardless. Celebrate, but this is a different kind of lucha party. We are not alike. Before we kick this video off, I want to give a huge shout out to Sega for providing a review copy of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim for Nintendo Switch. Like I said earlier at the beginning of this video, I did review this originally on the PlayStation 4 back in 2020, and it was a game that I, I was raving heavily about it, but it's a game that a lot of people just weren't interested in trying out that I personally knew. And it was weird because you would think, you know, it's a vanillaware title. Like, they have such a pedigree for such amazing titles. But I guess maybe my circle is just full of idiotic peons and they just don't know fucking greatness if it went up and bitch slapped them in the face. I, I, I guess. But here we are two years later and it's now available on Nintendo Switch. And honestly, I am not at all mad about this because this game is so great. And I like the fact, one, if I just want to take it with me, I can take it with me on the go on my Switch. I can play it, you know, when I'm just chilling and I can just dock it. So, you know, I <sighs> this game just works so perfectly for the Switch. But anyways, we're going to talk about this, why it's the GOAT, and uh, why you need to go ahead and pick it up. Before we do all that, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and the notification bell. That way you stay up to date on all the latest and greatest content that comes from this channel. And also, if you want to support the content that we do, check us out over on Patreon.com slash Mikel Casanova, as well as check us out here on our channel memberships for this channel. All that being said, I mean, we got merch too, Teespring, T Public, got some dope stuff, got some new stuff in the works, so just make sure you stay tuned for that, and uh, so much more. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into 13 Sentinels Aegis Rims review for the Switch for the second time. Let's do it. All right. So when it comes to the story, I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to explain it because it's incredibly difficult given that the story involves a lot of things from kaiju, aliens, mechs, time travel, dimension travel, angsty teenagers. There's just so much shit in this game, man. It's, it's good. It's good shit. That, that's all I got to say. The game starts in the year 1985 and features several high school students who are living their day-to-day -day lives until the arrival of Kaiju. The story consists of 13 teenagers who will end up having to defend humanity from an army of monsters and mechs invading Earth. Now, naturally, each of them pilots their own massive robots called Sentinels capable of going face-to-face -face with mankind's mysterious new enemy. And as far as story, I'm going to leave it right there because there's so much to dive into. And I said this two years ago, and I'm going to say this again. This is something you need to experience for yourself. I'm not going to spoil anything because this game, this is a modern Picasso. Like, this is a piece of art. Go play it. Go experience the story. Now, we got to talk about the gameplay because I know you guys are curious, like, okay, you're praising it, but what the hell does this play like? All right, well, as far as gameplay in 13 Sentinels, it's a mix of several different genres in that it floats between being a tactical RPG uh, taking place across a grid-based arena, as well as being a turn-based RPG where you will wait for your turn gauge to fill and can move about the battlefield and use attacks that drain your magic-like gauge called EP. It's also a visual novel that unfolds and, you know, a deep 
and complex plot, and finally, a mystery game of searching environments for more clues as to what the hell is going on. With so many gameplay styles mixed into this title, I think I need to break down each one, starting off first with the visual novel aspect of the game, which is about 90% of what you'll be experiencing as each student has their own story and perspective, and while majority of the time the characters will be talking to one another, there will be instances where you will have an opportunity to press the B button to continue talking to them or by pressing X to initiate thoughts of your selected character. When the thoughts of your character are selected, you will be able to use the D-pad to move about the various thoughts and either press X again and they will ponder on either things said or mentioned to them or items that may have been picked up along the way and be able to observe and give more context to the situations. You also have the option of pressing B at times to either investigate more or hand an item over to another character or inspecting it again further. There are certain things in the environments you roam around in that you can interact with and will have a prompt over them when you're near them. You can walk by just moving the left analog stick or run by pressing the A button. When in your Aegis, you'll be on the battlefield in what can first appear as an RTS or tactical style game with its grid-based layout. And while it is indeed an RTS, it's also a turn-based RPG, like I was telling you earlier. As each character has a gauge that builds up similar to how in, you know, most Final Fantasy games where you have an ATB or active time battle-like system where this has a similar gauge to that that will allow you to select whether you move about the field, defend, or select one or several attacks, both ranged and close range, based on the character and their aegises. In battles, you have conditions needed to win the battle, being either to clear the stage of all enemies, or maintaining a point for a period of time, or protecting the base in a tower defense style manner. Now when it comes to the graphics, if you're at all familiar with vanillaware games like Dragon's Crown, Odin Sphere, Motormasa, The Demon Blade, Grim Grimoire, Lost Epic, or the like, then you'll know to expect superb art and animation for everything in the game. Each character has a tremendous amount of detail drawn in them from their clothes to their hair and more the way each character moves is so beautiful and, and each movement is it's all hand drawn and just looks incredible the environments are hand drawn and so beautifully done and sway and move and react to whatever's going on in the game now going back to the battles the environments within them have a tron like grid look to them with various lines and vectors and whatnot and not really a lot to say here other than it looks looks really damn good. Now when it comes to audio, the audio in the game is superb with the choice when you first start the game of either playing the game in English or Japanese. With either choice you go with having superb voice acting with a lot of voices you're sure to recognize. When it comes to the OST, I have to say that everything sounds good, even if the music doesn't have anything that just strikes you as that standout tune. When roaming around areas, the music has a nice ambience to it. Now, as far as the downsides, honestly, the only downside to this game is trying to keep up with each of the 13 character stories and all the terminology and time travel stuff. But then again, that just could be my ADHD and the fact that I'm multitasking across so many different games for reviews and not really a real issue. It's, it's me. It's not the game. Trust me. It's, it's me. Not you. Not the game. It's me. Okay, let's go. When it comes to the wrap up, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is a game with a lot going for it. It's got a superb story, engaging and relatable characters, breathtaking visuals, and style that's just absolutely fantastic, obscenely amazing battles, and an excellent voice cast, all to make this one of the sleeper hits again of 2022, like it was in 2020. So if you've got a Nintendo Switch, you owe it to yourself to pick this game up, and if you've also got a PlayStation 4 or 5, go pick up a copy of the game for that platform as well. You need to add this game to your collection, because there's simply no reason to not play this game. And with that being said, that's to review for 13 sentinels aegis rim again shout out to sega atlas sega atlas sega atlas <laughs> I forget they merged for providing a review copy of the game for the Nintendo Switch for the second time, like the first time for the PlayStation 4, now for the Nintendo Switch. This game is phenomenal. You need to go and pick it up and play it. But why don't you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. You think this game is amazing? And if so, what do you love about it? Or if you think it's overrated, I want to hear your comments about that as well. 
Whatever your thoughts are, let's get the conversation going in the comment section below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, and um, yeah, all that good stuff. If you want to support the content that we do here, head on over to patreon.com slash Mikel Casanova, and also consider becoming a channel member as well. That way you can get early and exclusive access to content, behind the scenes on what's coming up, and input on various content that will be coming out. Outside of that, we have merch on Teespring and Teepublic. Go check it out. We got some new killer stuff coming out, some more Hawaii-based stuff uh, to represent my culture and more, and uh, some other good stuff as well. So with that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, be blessed, go with Aloha, have some Aloha in your life. Make sure you go and play this game, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Mahalo for making it to the end of the video. And if you found anything of importance or substance that you gained from watching this, make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you sub to the channel and ding the notification bell. That way you stay up to date on all the content that you get from my channel, from podcasts, streams, reviews, impressions, reactions, and so much more. If you want to support what we do, we do have channel memberships. We've got Patreon. We've got Subscribestar as well as as coffee which i would love to be drinking some coffee right now which i am mm, that's some good coffee but anyway we got all of that and we also have merch on teespring and tea public so make sure you go check that out and all that being said i just hope to see you in the next video that i put out so hey see you around